Hey guys, it's Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Um, I've hinted previously that I'm going to experiment with melting aluminium in my uh, backyard. And in my scrap I get a lot of pieces like this. You know, cast aluminium housings and they've got that's got a metal sleeve in it. It's also got some other metal bolts that are well and truly corroded. This little is a water pump housing off an engine and there's, you know, it would be a major effort to try and separate the steel from the cast aluminium for good scrap price. I also get a lot of these electric fry pans, they're cast aluminium, uh, but the element is moulded within the cast, so it would have to go as irony aluminium if I was to sell it, and that would only be worth a couple of cents. Um, as pure aluminium, it's going to be worth a dollar, maybe two dollars, um, because it does weigh a fair bit, that one, it's quite thick. I've also got plans to use the aluminium and, and do some castings. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube of casting aluminium and the beauty of it is that it's readily available and it also melts at a relatively low temperature around about 660 degrees Celsius I think which is low enough to melt in a home fire and what I have here is a bit of a fire pit it's actually the outer drum of a large industrial uh, washing machine so it's reasonably heavy gauge steel um, and the beauty of this one I've done a bit of a trial run and I melted some lead the other day is um, the hole in the center where the gearbox and the spindle came up provides a really good updraft now I don't want to use electricity for these projects I'd rather do it with uh, out wasting any any money on power and also my projects I like to be as green as possible so that natural updraft should generate a fair bit of heat in the center of this area once I get a nice fire going just from old scrap timber and hopefully we can get enough heat to melt aluminium with no problems. Uh, a couple of things I've got here to melt the aluminium in. There's some large very old cast iron pots quite thick quite heavy and I have used that little one to melt lead in it and it worked beautifully. So that's the plan. Um, now, I've got this trolley thing here, which I picked up in a shed years ago when I was cleaning up. I'm not sure what it was for. I've actually used it to test outboard motors. It's got a really nice heavy timber crossbeam at the back, uh, and it's on good solid old wheels. So my plan is, because I'm going to be hanging these cast iron pots in over the center of the fire, they're going to be quite heavy and of course molten aluminium is going to be extremely dangerous so we've got to have all our safety um, considerations in place and I'm planning to make a bit of a pivoting crane off the back of this beam where I can stand back this section push down a lever and then swing it across and then somehow do a pour so this video will be a bit of an experiment uh, I'm just pretty much making this up as I go so I've got to hunt around my yard now for some sort of suitable bracket that I can put a large pole across and a hook on the end. Uh, and then I'll need some way, of course, of pouring the, uh, the molten metal out into a mould or a cast. So very much experimental at this stage. I'll have a hunt around the yard and see what I can find with regards to uh, making a bracket first. And then we'll probably light the fire and have a bit of a test. So I've had a good fossick around the yard and the best I can come up with is this little kid's bike. Uh, the steering head will give me a good swivel and I'm thinking the fork at the bottom there where the wheel goes through will give me an area where I can rest a pole through so it'll give me a swivel and a pivot. It's going to be pretty rough and I'm not going to waste a lot of time getting this set up because I want to be sure it works. If it all works really well then I'll probably make some room in the workshop, get the welder out and weld up a proper bracket. But at this stage we're experimental and I think this will do with minimal work to see if the job's going to happen. So now the bike has been dismantled. Uh, I figure I'll just cut through the main frame with the angle grinder uh, which will give me a fairly flat surface to bolt to the timber and then the, um, the steering head should pivot through that. So we'll cut that off with the grinder and get it mounted up and see how it looks. So you can see I've cut the frame off here. It's um, a steel frame, this one. Fairly light gauge but quite strong. Cut through very easily. Now I've just clamped it approximately in the centre of that crossbeam. 
and uh, I was going to drill some holes through the pipe and into the timber but I did find these I found a couple of these uh, old TV antenna clamps so they'll be ideal just drill a couple of small holes through the timber and they'll clamp the pipe on and that will do for uh, for a test run but I think it's going to work well actually it um, sits up there it pivots nicely it's quite firm so we'll get this bolted up with some clamps and then find a suitable piece of pipe to use as our lever. And I managed to find a suitable pipe. It's quite a large diameter. Uh, it's not super heavy, so uh, it'll be easier to manoeuvre and it should fit in the fork of the bike frame all right. And I found another of these old TV antenna clamps just to clamp to the end of it to give me an anchor point for a hook. Um, I do love having a, a yard full of junk because you can nearly always find what you're looking for without having to go off to the hardware. So I think that'll be fine. Uh, the pots aren't going to be super heavy. I mean the cast iron is heavy but the aluminium is light and I'm not going to have the things full anyway so I think that'll suffice for a test. Okay I think this contraption is going to work all right. Um, I'm over, overcoming one problem at a time. Uh, the hook on the end is great for the little melting pot, but the large one hung too low. Uh, but that was easy. I can easily just loop the handle over the main bar, so that's fine. It raises it up enough, no problems there. The pipe's going to work really well. It pivots and twists beautifully. Uh, now to hold the pot at a good height above the flame, or above the coals I um, just found an old bit of chain and the handles of this trolley are going to work fine I found another um, this one's an exhaust car exhaust clamp that provides me with a hooking point and I can lengthen or shorten the chain depending on how high or low I want the pot so if I lift it up higher the chain goes slack and I could adjust the links so that works fine. Um, I'll unhook it now. Hopefully I don't drop the camera. And then that allows me... See, it allows the pole to sink right down. But if I put some pressure this end, it spins around nicely between the bicycle forks and the other pots in the road. But I've got a... a raised platform there now that I can rest the pots on so I'm quite confident I can get these out of the fire with molten metal uh, I'm a good eight feet away so it keeps me well out of the danger zone out of uh, any fumes from molten aluminium and uh, I think that'll work well so the only problem now I have to overcome is having a hook on the side of these pots to enable me to lift up the side and have them pour safely so I'll nut that out. Uh, we've run out of time today to light the fire and give it a go, but it'll be on the cards for tomorrow. So there is one other problem I can foresee. Uh, the wheels on this little trolley are actually a rubber, a hard rubber. Now, being that close to the fire, they're going to get a lot of radiant heat, and I would imagine they're going to start smoking. Uh, the timber may even get a bit hot too. Now, the trolley doesn't have to be up against it all the time, but of course, while i am got the pot in the fire and melting, it will be, and that won't be just five minutes. So we're going to have to perhaps do some shielding there, try and keep the heat off the rubber and the timber. Um, I think a layer, like a silver bit of stainless steel might be enough. We'll try it and see. The other option I've got is to actually extend the pole and move the whole trolley further back, but then you're getting sort of much longer lengths which require extra leverage probably a little less control so i'll see if i can come up with some shielding for those wheels all right i had a brainwave with these wheels and i've put some old cast iron wheels on there looks a bit like a mad max machine now but uh, that should work there'll be no heat issues with those wheels the ones at the back should be far enough away and if the timber starts to get a bit hot i'll just splash some water on it for now the actual timber floor and this doesn't matter at all I could easily just take it out so we're having an experiment today I've 
lit the fire. I'm just building up a bit of a coal base. You can see that um, that centre section has already got a bit of draft coming up through it. So we should get plenty of heat to uh, melt the aluminium. I've seen lots of furnaces on YouTube where guys have been melting aluminium and casting and a lot of them use um, fan forced methods like an old blower or a vacuum reversed and it does generate more heat but it also puts a lot more heat into the melting crucible whatever you're using and cast iron and um, stainless steel or whatever certainly burns out with more heat so I don't need excessive heat and I don't want to use power anyway so hopefully this draft natural draft method will give enough heat to melt so we'll get it a bit warmer we'll build up a bit of a coal base and then we'll lower the pot in for a test run well I've thrown some really dirty cast in there and it's got a lot of sludge uh, there were bits of metal in it so uh, it is melting now so it's good but it's very sludgy and one piece must have had a bit of magnesium in it because it had a few rather bright little burning spots so I guess I'd, it'd be much easier to use clean aluminium I might try some saucepans and something at some stage but uh, as far as my test goes yes I can get it hot enough to melt aluminium and this old dirty cast is um, it's quite molten underneath that crusty layer so we'll try and scrape all the muck off it shortly we'll perhaps give it a bit more heat a little bit longer I might add a few more bits just to give a bit more depth so I stoked up some extra wood and uh, put a old sunbeam cast aluminium fry pan in there and it hasn't taken long and it's starting to break down pretty quickly so we'll just let that all settle down and then we'll lift the pot out all right I'm going to pull it out soon I've made a bit of an observation with the updraft through the center of the fire pit when I've got timber in there and it's flaming well like it is now I get plenty of heat when the dies down a little bit just to the coals uh, the draft coming up through the middle is much cooler air and it seems to go straight to the cast pot and actually cool it down a bit so I've found that the aluminium kind of melts quick when I've got it roaring and when it settles down to coals it, it seems to cool off fairly quickly and I guess that's because of the cool air being drawn in through the middle and it's fo sort of focused right on the base of the cast pot so I might have to experiment perhaps so I can have the air drawn in in other spots and not directly onto the cast piece uh, but anyway look it's working well um, as I said earlier this is a lot of mucky stuff in this one and I think it'd be much better with clean aluminium I've been getting a little bit of the dross off the top now which is um, all sorts of impurities uh, and aluminium also forms a aluminium oxide which melts at a much higher temperature and so that gets to the surface like a, a dross they call it I've made a little scooper here out of a, a kitchen utensil and a piece of aluminium from a window frame and that's going to be ideal for me to reach in and scoop the muck off without getting too close and I was just going to try and get that element out from the sunbeam fry pan and there it is so that's the heating element that was encased in the cast aluminium of the sunbeam fry pan so that's well and truly melted up there's a couple of other bits of metal that I've got out so we'll try and scrape some of the, the dross from the top and then we'll pour it into I've just got a stainless steel tray just to see how much we get all right so I've got all the dross off it's relatively clean uh, that little scraper scooper thing worked really well now the jib I've made here I'm very happy with this it's good control it's easy to move uh, the pipe is long enough that it doesn't get too hot it's warm and also the frame being on wheels really helps because as you see there I could move it forward a little bit just to position the pot so pretty happy with this design I don't think I need to change it and I just decided to use these multi-grip pliers uh, the aluminium doesn't add much weight and it's really easy to control the pour this way and keeping myself well out of danger and here's this lovely silvery liquid metal aluminium or aluminium depending where you're from and I got a, a little bit more than I thought I would out of this, that um, stuff that I melted so there you go that's the contents nice and clean got the impurities out not much left in the pot I probably could have leveled up this bench it's sitting a little bit crooked there but look first attempt that's great okay well that was pretty successful I'm pretty happy with that as an experimental first pour um, we've got a decent 
chunk of aluminium over there which should be pretty clean. I'll drop that in some water shortly and we'll have a look at it and we'll weigh it up. The um, cast iron pot worked really well. I didn't need the hook that I put on the back. I just used some multipliers as you saw and it just pivoted and poured very nicely. And this was all the dross we got. Remembering that the first few pieces I put in had big chunks of metal in them. One was that water pump housing and there was a piece of a chainsaw and not only was it dirty but I think some of it was magnesium as well so you know there was a lot of muck there but we've turned uh, irony aluminium which probably would have only been a few cents worth and a hassle to store into quite a decent lump of nice clean pure aluminium so that's all I'm going to do for this experiment i'm planning to do some molds I've, I've got sorry i've got a kangaroo mold and i'm planning to try and make some kangaroos don't know how well that'll work and uh also i have a few other ideas that i can basically turn this old yucky aluminium and and saucepans and things that are very bulky and not worth really running down to melbourne for scrap into stuff that i can sell through the shop so thanks for watching i'll um i'll weigh up this piece first and then we'll sign off Okay, I probably shouldn't have quenched it so quickly. It actually opened up a bit of a crack. And it's a little bit jagged on the bottom. So had I let it cool naturally, it might have been a much smoother, shinier sample. But hey, I'm pretty happy with that. Good chunk of aluminium, pure. And it weighs just over one and a half kilos. So I'd say about three and a half pound. So that's pretty good. Um, scrap price... Now, I believe scrapyards won't actually take aluminium ingots. Um, their reasoning is that they don't know what's inside it. So for people that are melting ingots and want to take them to the scrapyard, I believe it's, it's not likely that they'll buy it. Um, I have uh, one guy I was chatting to on a forum said he was going to run molten aluminium into water and it makes little sort of like little shot particles and they'd probably buy it that way. But I'm probably more interested in forging, well, in um, casting things that I can sell in my shop. But I'm pretty happy. That's a very good experiment um, that worked quite well. I'm quite happy with my uh, setup. Uh, no electricity, no power used. There's ample heat to melt the aluminium. It'll be much easier with clean aluminium. And uh, like I hinted at before, I've got a kangaroo mould and we might try and make some cast aluminium kangaroos at some stage. Radio. see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.